Welcome back everyone to another video and in this one we will be finally testing the Raspberry Pi versus the Banana Pi in a RAM capacity comparison. Now one of the main reasons that I ever got the Banana Pi M64 that I asked for a review unit is to test this exact same thing. I really wanted to play the devil's advocate to the fact that 1GB of RAM is more than enough on your Raspberry Pi. I wanted to go ahead and push it and show you guys that there are certain applications and there are certain things that would actually require more than one gigabyte of ram and will result in a performance drop that is so significant that you will say hey why doesn't this have two gigabytes of ram so playing the devil's advocate um I plan to compile Kodi because I know for a fact that Kodi used to take a lot of RAM during compilation but it they have optimized their code and I wasn't able to get that effect on the Raspberry Pi 3 or the Banana Pi. The RAM usage stayed well within the 1 gigabyte limit. So I searched and I found out that Qt5 not even compiling but just configuring the Qt5 and building the dependencies takes up more than a gig of RAM. So I went ahead and did some experiments on this and here is the result. Alright so the audio is going to be a little bit um, not perfect so what I have here is I am building Qt5 on the Raspberry Pi 3. So here is the Raspberry Pi 3 setup now. Uh, what I'm trying to test is the amount of RAM usage and how uh, it affects the Raspberry Pi versus the uh, Banana Pi M64 performance. So first two things here on the command line. What I have is I have exported the make flag as J4. So it will be building on all four cores. This is what we want to test. Next I'm just simply configuring. So it does uh, build a couple of components and we can we will be able to see the effect uh, immediately but just for comparison I'm adding time uh, command in front of that so I can get a time output and then uh, compare it with the uh, banana pie in m4 and see how uh, the time difference is so uh, I'll just press enter and let it make and uh, as soon as it does that the CPU usage goes to about 100% the RAM usage uh, starts to increase exponentially and there will be a time uh, when it goes so much that I will not be able to move the mouse and the uh, whole system will be hung so right now as you can see the LED for the SD card is also lit up and uh, there's no movement see here there's no movement at all uh, on the screen and that is the point where it starts swapping everything the RAM is so full that it starts swapping everything to the SD card and that is why you need 2 gigabytes of RAM so it's a very specific thing but you actually need at times 2 gigabytes of RAM so I'll just let this complete and I'll see you uh, when I test it with the banana pi m64 alright so the uh, raspberry pi's uh, qt configuration has finally come to an end but it has taken a whooping uh, 362 minutes to complete with all that um, ram swapping that was going on and as you can see the system has finally settled down to its regular state so we'll take a look at the uh, Banana Pi M64 with a 2 gigs of RAM and how well it performs uh, in front of the Raspberry Pi. Alright, so we are back with the uh, QT configure, QT5 uh, configure test on the uh, Banana Pi M64. So I have the uh, make flag J4. So we will be compiling on all four cores as well on this machine and here you can see we have around 2 gigabytes of RAM available. So this is, the exactly say, this is exactly the same thing I did on the Raspberry Pi. So let's just press enter and see how much RAM usage actually goes up to. So 
remember on the Raspberry Pi 3 it took us more than 6 hours to compile so here we go and as you can see the RAM uh, usage increases slightly and then keeps on increasing and then still keeps on increasing and we are having a successful compile the OS is not hanging out and um, it looks like the RAM is holding up pretty well as and let's just see where it goes it hasn't hung till now and by this time on the Raspberry Pi 3 we were completely locked out of our system now of course you did see the RAM not go too much higher than 900 megabytes on this one so I think I'll just wait a few more seconds and if it goes any higher I think it should so it has already reached 900 megabytes and this is the time where the Raspberry Pi would have started paging crazy. So yes, I think it reached a little bit more than 920 megabytes there. Alright, so we have successfully crossed the gigabyte mark and this is where the Raspberry Pi would have just logged itself and not respond at all. So yes, you can see there are certain things where 2 gigabytes of RAM on this processor is actually uh, very useful. So I'll just keep it going and we'll see where it ends up and how much time it takes. So it's hovering at 900 to 1 gigabyte of RAM usage but so the comp alright so the compilation has completed on the banana by m64 and the results basically speak for themselves it's just seven minutes so yes uh, the RAM does make a big difference in this particular use case and let's talk why Alright, to sum it up, what happened was I built the dependencies using the dot configure command on all the four cores. It was exactly the same for the Banana Pi M64 and the Raspberry Pi 3. The difference was that the Raspberry Pi 3 had just a bit little RAM and instead of being able to go over the 1 gigabyte mark, the RAM uh, topped out at about uh, well at a bit over uh, 900 MB and that resulted in the hard drive in which case which the SD card being used to swap the RAM data in and out and the, uh, the SD card is magnitude slower than the RAM and it took so much time to process all that info information back and forth that it took us 6 hours to process it so and for the same task for the exactly the same task with two gigabytes of ram and the ram usage going a little bit above the hundred uh, 1024 megabyte or one gigabyte mark we were able to complete this whole thing in just seven minutes now remember the cpu performance of both these devices is exactly the same one minute here or there would have uh, made no difference but it's six hours versus seven minutes so yes there are things you can do on your raspberry pi that will perform very 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 poorly if you have too little ram and this is one of them now and i want to find out a lot more just to play the devil's advocate and say the raspberry pi needs two gigabytes of ram now saying that on a day-to-day -day basis on a regular sort of your raspberry pi thing you wouldn't really require more than one gigabyte it's more than enough for probably 99.9% .9 of your processes and tasks but it gives first of all a good multitasking capability and then there are just certain things if you want to push it to the limit you 
you know might as well have two gigabytes of ram so i'll see if i can do some more experiments and you know qt5 is not mm, used by too many people but uh, i'll see if i can do some more experiments to find out what are more uh, applications that when compiled or you know just run uh, they tend to take up a lot more ram and two gigabytes ram is actually favorable in this condition so if you have something in mind do leave a comment down below and let me know uh, of such applications and thank you so much for watching this video and i will see you all in the next one